Hey everybody, I'm here in the back of my 4Runner and it's hot. But let's talk about sleeping in the 4Runner. Typically I just put my bed roll out, I got a little inflatable mat and that's good enough for me. But I gotta make things more complicated. A lot of people do a built-in here, a platform. My issue with those is like, they're usually up here and then like all you can do is like get in bed and sleep. But I like to like sit and hang out sometimes in the cargo area. For that, a lot of people just put a leveler in because of this issue, which you probably are familiar with. The hump, the transition between the seat and the cargo area. It is like a two inch height difference. With the inflatable mat down, I don't even really feel it, but it is there. My idea is this, somewhere between a sleeping platform and a leveler. So basically like a low profile platform. Bonus, if it has a little bit of storage in it. Also, it should be compact. When it's not in use, I want to be able to stash it in my shed and not take up a ton of room. I want it to fold up like a suitcase, like that. A lot of people will take out this seat. I don't want to do that, it's staying. Um, also, people will sometimes build on top of it. So that is like a 12 inch high platform and it runs into the whole thing of like no headroom. Lots of storage, no headroom. I don't like it. So I'm um, up until here, that's my goal. So I started sketching out some ideas for my folding solo sleeper. Initially it was gonna have drawers and fold inside out. I also had some ideas about some flaps that open up so I could sit sideways, but I ditched those for weight. Just like with the camp kitchen, I ditched the drawers in favor of just putting a tub in there. One with a locking lid, because it's going to be sideways. I needed to take some measurements to nail down my final design. My idea is two halves, one for the head and one for the foot, connected by a bridge. The bridge will be as wide as the feet are tall, so that when it folds up, it'll make a rectangular box. It will also have a couple center supports that are different heights to compensate for this rise in the middle. This box is about six inches tall, so if I make the other foot about four inches tall, it should be about level. Turns out, if you drop the support for the head, on top of the headrest that's folded, it is also six inches tall. A key factor in the success of this design is having a support at the head and the foot that interlock so that its height is the same as the width of that connecting bridge. The next issue I needed to consider is that even though the tops need to be the same lengths, the area they are sitting on are two different lengths. I figured out I'm going to have to inset the middle support leg for the head end a little bit so that the span is only the 27 inches of the folded seat. I should be able to get everything I need from a 4x4 sheet of this 15 30 seconds plywood if I can find a decent one. One thing I learned from the camp kitchen build is I am not going to mess around with pocket holes or fancy joinery. I am skipping straight to the braces. I also learned not to depend on weenie little wood screws. This time it's screws and nuts for the weight bearing stuff. started by cutting two 20 inch wide strips off the plywood. Then I cut them both down to 29 inches long. Next, I cut a six inch wide bridge. And the piece that will be both the foot support and the head support. It's actually just one piece, but cut in a way so that they interlock when the platform is closed. I wanted some cool modern legs at the foot end, so I cut them at an angle. Once 
With all of my cuts for the outside of the platform complete, time for assembly. Initially I was going to make this 18 inches wide, which means this 36 inch hinge could be cut perfectly in half. But after comparing what 18 inches looks like compared to the width of my hips, I decided to go 20 inches. That means that the hinges aren't going to reach all the way to the edges, but worth it. With the middle part done, time to focus on the feet. Like I said, I wanted to do this sort of modern angled look, but I soon ran into a problem, and that is that warped plywood came back to bite me. They are not going to intersect like that. So I'm just going to have to square off those cuts, which will give me some gaps, which will give me a little flexibility in the fitment. To keep the bin in place and to keep the whole thing closed, I got two hook and eye latches. They're six inches long, which is perfect, but that's actually too perfect. Because even when unlatched, the loop part will prevent the bin from coming out. But I'll worry about solving that later. The outer structure complete, it's time to focus on those pesky inner supports. A 4 inch tall one for the head part, and a 6 inch tall one for the foot part. We also need to figure out that offset placement for the 4 inch one. I was going to use some of my plywood scrap for these, but I got a little leery about their support capability, so I'm going to use these 1 inch thick cutoffs that I had. Now my concern is, are these inner supports going to bang into each other when I'm folding this thing shut? So I'm going to temporarily attach them and see what happens. Unfortunately, since I switched from plywood to board, the screws with nuts that I bought are not long enough, so I am just going to use some wood screws or whatever I can find. Now, the moment of truth. Thanks to the double hinge, there is no interference. Another thing I was hoping it would do would flex the opposite way to make sort of a recliner, and it does do that. If you take the headrest off the seat, you can even go a little higher.
By adjusting the seat position, it's almost like a Craftmatic adjustable bed. That is the gist of the structure, but there is a lot more coming up. I'm painting, I'm adding padding, I'm adding hardware, all kinds of cool stuff that will be in the next episode.